Hey, beautiful friends. Today we have something exciting. We are doing a Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom episode. So I have a very special person who has asked a question of me and her name is Jen Rogers. And I am going to ask her to introduce herself to you and give a little feature opportunity for her and her business. And then we will jump into her question and I will answer it. But before we do that, I want to encourage you guys to apply for a Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom episode. The reason being, it's your opportunity to one, get questions answered that you have. It's free coaching and it's a great opportunity to be featured, to get a shout out for your business. And, you know, we're a top 1% globally ranked show. So you're going to have eyes and ears on your business from all over the world. What is there to lose? I encourage you, and I'll put the link in the show notes for you to apply. Without further ado, Jen Rogers, welcome <laughs> to the Robin Graves Show. Okay, that is such a great up from great uh, setup for me to say. If you are in transition and thinking, it is the worst time ever to apply to get visibility on a top one percent worldwide ranked show. I am here to disprove that because I am smack dab in the middle of a transition. So currently, I am a podcast hostess with the mostest of the Empowered Stepmom, and I am here today because I am in the middle of a pivot. So I love speaking. I love podcasting and I love working with entrepreneurs. And for the last several years, God has had me working with stepmoms. So that's what I do. I'm a certified professional life coach and I use that skill in a lot of creative ways. And I'm here to get help from you, Robin, because I'm pivoting to a passion that I have that relates to time management. Ooh, that's so cool. And I know you have a journal, so we can, we can like put a little plug in for that towards the end of the show, but <laughs> let's dive into what your question is for me. Yes. I want to know what to do. <laughs> I have a top 1.5% ranked podcast, and I'm wondering if I piggyback on top of that one or if I start a whole brand new podcast because my audience is Christian stepmoms currently, and I'm moving to Christian women entrepreneurs. So I want to help them with time management because as a rising star entrepreneurs, they kind of don't know where to shine their light and they get confused and distracted by all the things. So that's what I want to help with. And it seems I want to honor the women I'm currently serving and it would seem disingenuous to me to say, hey, all of a sudden, boom, now we're going to talk about time management for entrepreneurs because they're two distinct groups of women. So that's why I'm here to get your help. I love it. So first, I want to ask you, do you have any idea in your current audience how many of those step moms are entrepreneurs? I don't have an exact number, but I would tell you a significant number are, particularly in my Facebook group. There are a couple of hundred women in there, and there's probably at least at least 75 that I know of that are entrepreneurs. Okay, so that's a significant number. And the reason I asked that question is it's really great to know who is already in your community, who's going to stick with you in this transition. And you want to be able to take as many people with you as you possibly can. Now, how do you do that? First and foremost, it's important to start talking about this transition. And you can do that in myriad ways. But first and foremost, if your focus is on time management, you've already been talking about time management with these stepmoms. Because let's face it, if you're a stepmom, you're juggling probably, especially if you're a blended family, you're juggling schedules of multiple people and trying to blend them together in a way that is seamless and not showing favoritism or whatever. So I would imagine that you've been talking about this a lot. And if that's the case, you can bring these people along with this on the journey to transition, to pivot. But the key is going to be to continue emphasizing the importance of time management. Your brand has been built, your personal brand has been built on time management, but now you're shifting the focus on who you are going to be talking to. So first and foremost, you want to emphasize the time management and keep that consistent. And then encourage people 
to continue to trust you that you're not leaving them in your wake, but you're moving forward because you feel God calling you to another directive, to another group of people. And in your messaging, you can explain, here's why I think God's calling me to this. Here has been my past experience and why I'm so passionate about serving this new group of people and invite those that fit into that avatar, which I like to, I don't even like to use the word avatar because we're humans, but those humans bring those humans that fit into that description of women entrepreneurs along with you, and they will become your support system. They will become your biggest cheerleaders. And what you could even do is invite them to share within your podcast or your community, your Facebook group on their experiences with time management as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But the more you bring time management into your messaging, your conversations, your, um, you know, any type of content that you're creating, you're going to be able to continue that emphasis and make sure that that's consistent with all of your branding and everything that's going forward. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? It does make sense. So what I'm thinking of is I'm thinking two things. One, the podcast shift would be time to simplify mm -hmm. and really time management success habits for busy Christian women entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So there's that piece of it. And then the other piece is the thing that I talk about that time management is a part of is really your vision, creating your vision that you have to know the direction that you're going in order to be able to understand how you're going to plan your day. So as I'm thinking about and reflecting on what you're saying for focused messaging and what I've already been talking about, I would say the biggest word that would come up would be vision even more so than time management. So I, I can make a, some sort of connection there to say that, listen, we talk about vision a lot on this show and vision is great, but if all you do is talk about your vision, it's not going anywhere mm -hmm. fast. You've got to take action. And how do you know what is the right action to take? And that's where time management comes in. So I'm thinking through some talking points mm -hmm. here. Uh, of how to do it because you and I, we've talked offline a little bit. I've got 130 plus reviews. I've got 221 episodes right now. And to start over from ground zero, part of me, I, I like a challenge. So I'm up for it. I'm like, I can do it again. I can go and do it again. But it took three and a half years to do 221 episodes. Do I really want to wait three and a half years to grow that credibility to say, I've been showing up week after week after week. I think I get caught up on the reviews that talk a lot about co-parenting. And uh, I actually get a lot of reviews that say, I'm not a stepmom, but, <laughs> and, and I remember I did a show one time saying, I think I want to change the name of the show to, I'm not a stepmom, but mm -hmm. because they're really life lessons for women who love the Lord and, and who want to figure out how we get it all together. So um, I'm, I'm still vacillating. Like, what do I do with that. So I can talk about this is the direction I'm going, but the, I mean, the ultimate question is, do I kill one thing and start over from ground zero? So I will give you my thoughts on that. And you can tell me how you feel after you hear what my perspective is. And having done this, I was two years into my show when I changed the name of it. And I changed the name from the second phase podcast to the Robin Graham show, because I didn't only want to highlight people that were in their second phase. Now, most of my guests are in their second phase. They were in corporate, they transitioned, even if they were entrepreneurs, chances are they've transitioned into something new. So we're all in that second phase, third phase, fourth phase of our lives, of our businesses. However, I wanted to be able to emphasize other things too. And as I was writing my book and publishing my book, around mental health challenges, that was important for me to be able to have episodes that were not related to the second phase. Now, when I transitioned, I kept everything as is. And I did that because I didn't want to lose the content because so much of that content was still applicable to the new show name. And it was still in line with my messaging. So if your past episodes are still in line 
with what you're going to be talking about, there's no reason to get rid of the platform you've already built. As you just said, like it would be a challenge to rebuild that. I'm all about simplification. And when you think about time management and vision, if your vision is to continue to grow and not lose that status of 1.5, the top 1.5%, it would be wise to build off of the platform you have already built. Mm -hmm. If you do it the other way, yeah, absolutely you can do it, but it is going to take time. Now you already have a built-in audience, which is important because that built-in audience that's going to go forward with you because they know you, love you, and trust you, they're going to help spread the word for you, but it's still going to take a lot of time to rebuild the volume of reviews and ratings and just the rank status that you have built for your show. Yeah. I mean, it certainly took a lot of time and a lot of hard knocks <laughs> mm -hmm. for sure. I kind of like the idea of bringing the audience in to say, Hey, what do you think? So this is what I'm wrestling with right now. What do you think about that? And even when I send out an email, I can say, Hey, I'd really love to hear from you. Send them to a quick survey and mm -hmm. see what their thoughts are on it. I can even show up in my Facebook group and just have an authentic conversation because again, there's a lot of similar things between being, it's not like being a stepmom is you're an alien. You're not, you're a woman mm -hmm. <laughs> and you just are dealing with a different family challenge than other women are dealing with, but mm -hmm. still and deal in, with vision and all of that. In your marketing materials and like, even on the graphic, you can say formerly known as, and so people mm. can readily recognize what your show is. I did that for quite a while. And then I transitioned the description of the show and I transitioned the graphic but here's the other thing. If you're keeping your brand assets, meaning your colors, your topography, and all of that, then you can you can change the graphic, but it's still going to be recognizable and your name's still going to be there. So anybody that's been following you for a length of time knows your name. You are your personal brand. So as long as you stay consistent and cohesive with what you've already built, people are going to recognize you even with a name change. But that's the beautiful thing is that when you're building this out and you're titling your show, you can make sure that you, from an SEO perspective, use those keywords and key phrases. But because you've already built on that former key phrase of stepmom, you can have that as formerly known as, and I think that's going to help you transition and pivot without losing or dropping off a lot of the people just because of the yeah. brand you've built as who you are. Yeah. 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 That's definitely true. And going through the branding process, I know I don't want to go through that again. I love, mm -hmm. I love it. I spent a lot of time on it. I've also spent a lot of money on it. And so I don't want to start over because I, it's newer to me within the past year. And so I know it's good and it feels good. I've gotten mm -hmm. so many compliments on the branding. So to me, that would seem foolish to shift it. So I, I know that that's also something else to take into consideration. So that's good. That's helpful. That's good. Good, 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 good. All right. So tell the listeners where they can connect with you and learn more from you, because I know you're in transition. So, but there are certain things about you that will not change like your email list or, you know, where you are on the online platforms. So yeah. tell them how they can find you and then they yeah. can observe your, dis your transition, but see what you ultimately decide to do with your show. Yeah, I ought to say, come on. If you want to be part of this uh, painful growth <laughs> shift, yes, come and find me. So I have decided very much in line with what you teach that social is not where I want to live my life. So I am moving solely to LinkedIn. So you can find me on LinkedIn at D Jen Rogers. And I'll emphasize that again, the Jen Rogers, like the Ohio State, because there are a lot of Jen Rogers in the world. So the Jen Rogers on LinkedIn. And uh, because I know probably half your audience is in a step family, I'm sure they can find some useful information on the podcast and my website. Just go to stepfamilypodcast.com and you will find all you need to know about what's going on cur currently and what's about to happen next. Oh, you know what? Now that you just said that about the URL, here's another tip for you. 
make sure that you redirect the old URL to the new URL. And that way, anybody that goes to that, that's not a dead link. It goes to, it's redirected to the new show so that people who have that link, because inevitably, if you've been on other podcasts previously, if you've got social media content out there, anything that has been directed to that old URL, if that is attached to your current website, you want to make sure that you redirect that to your new site. That's the last tip. I'm Got it. <laughs> got it. Well, thanks so much. You've given me a lot to think about, Robin, and I really do appreciate it. Thanks so much for taking the time. Absolutely, Jen. Thanks for being here. And listeners, like I said at the beginning, be sure and apply for a Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom episode because I think you'll love having the conversation and you get free insight. Nothing better than that. All right. Have a great day and I'll see you all here next time.